Amen. Well, with our attention and our hearts set on Thanksgiving tomorrow, and as Pastor just said uh, in his prayer, it's not about the the food, it's not about the turkey and the ham and all those things. It's it's really not even about fellowshipping with each other. It's it's about thanking God. Mm -hmm. And we ought to be people of thanksgiving every single day. Yes, amen. Uh, those who are saved, blood uh, washed, uh, born again believers, we certainly have something to be thankful about every day of our life. And uh, I don't know about y'all, but I am way behind on my thanksgiving. Amen. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, I think that that's probably true for most, most of us. And so... Uh, you know, as we think about Thanksgiving tomorrow, let's turn in our scriptures tonight to Psalms chapter 116. Psalm chapter 116. And let's begin reading in verse number one. The psalmist says here, I love the Lord because he hath heard my voice and my supplications. Because he hath inclined his ear unto me, therefore will I call upon him as long as I live. The sorrows of death compassed me and the pains of hell got hold upon me. I found trouble and sorrow. Then called I upon the name of the Lord. O Lord, I beseech thee, deliver my soul. Well, I love verse 5. Gracious is the Lord. Amen. And righteous. <laughs> yea, our God is merciful. The Lord preserveth the simple. I was brought low, and he helped me. Return unto thy rest, O my soul, for the Lord hath dealt bountifully with thee. For thou hast delivered my soul from death, mine eyes from tears, and my feet from falling. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I believed, therefore have I spoken. I was greatly afflicted. I said in my haste, all men are liars. What shall I render unto the Lord for all his benefits towards me? I will take the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows unto the Lord now in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. O Lord, truly I am thy servant. I am thy servant and the son of thy handmaid. Thou hast loosed my bonds. I will offer to thee sacrifice of thanksgiving. I will call upon the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows unto the Lord now in the presence of all his people. In the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of thee, O Jerusalem, praise ye the Lord. When I read these words here from the psalmist, I can't help but think about or see that this is really a doxology coming from the heart of one of God's children. A doxology is a compound word. You have the word doxa, which means glory of praise, to give glory to, to praise. You have the word logos or logic, which means a word about. So a doxology is a word about praise. And when I read this, I believe this gives us a word about praise. And, and we're coming up on, again, Thanksgiving tomorrow, giving thanks to God, which is none other than giving praise to God, giving Him all the praise mm -hmm. and all the thanksgiving. And so a doxology can be a hymn, it could be a hymn of praise towards God. It could be uh, a prayer of praise and adoration towards God uh, or any other expression of praise that 
you might would give towards the Lord and maybe silently just raising your hands up to the Lord or or whatever the case may be and uh, maybe even today you've heard some doxologies if you listen to the radio maybe you've heard uh, some some prayers of doxology or songs of doxology or or, or maybe you've uh, gave some, a word of testimony to somebody today uh, about how good God's been to you that that is a, a doxology if you would uh, a word about praise giving God praise and as we said a while ago certainly this time of the year we begin to think about how worthy God is to be praised and that we ought to be people of praise and people of thanksgiving not just during this season but in every season Amen. in season and out of season no matter what the case is uh, you know I was just uh, reminded as I was reading this earlier today I was sharing with pastor I think it was today that the last few days I felt like I was in a uh, just in a, a, a fog a spiritual fog and you know you've been there yourself you just kind of feel like you're walking through jello or whatever the case may be and uh, just spiritually speaking and and you say well how do you get out of that as I was reading this I was reminded that the, listen, the best way to come out of that fog is to praise your way out of it. Yeah. You know, you just wake up one day and you're just in that spiritual lull, that spiritual funk. And you, why am I going through this? You know, and you begin to have crazy thoughts. But listen, if you begin to praise the Lord and give him thanksgiving, none other than just for who he is. Yeah. None other than the fact that who he is and that he loves you. Just begin to praise him and praise your way out of that. And so as I began to read this today, Pastor, it began to help me uh, as far as I want to turn on a fan and blowing that smoke out of your eyes. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> so um, this psalm could rightfully be called David's doxology, I believe, because in it he's offering praise to God. And, and what David has said these many thousand years ago, I believe it is applicable to you and I tonight, in this year, in this day, in this hour. I believe it's applicable. We have much to praise Him for, church. Amen. We have much to praise Him for, Christian. Uh, we, and as I said a while ago, we're way behind in our praise. So I want to, let's step through some of these verses here and let's look at uh, David's doxology and see if we can we can learn maybe how we might offer up praise to God uh, just for who he is. If you look there in verse number one, the psalmist makes a statement there in verse number one, one A, he says, I love the Lord. Now that statement is a chorus of joy. When you say that, normally, listen, that just brings you into a state of joy. I love the Lord. Usually when you say that, you're just joyous about who God is. And uh, for a redeemed sinner to make that statement is a blessed thing. I'm, I'm talking about tonight things that you have to be thankful for. If you tonight can say, along with the psalmist here, I love the Lord. How many of you can say that tonight? Amen. I love the Lord. Amen. Well, listen, that's something to thank him for. For a redeemed sinner to be able to make that statement is a blessed thing. Because the scripture says, when we we were once enemies of God. Now an enemy of God was not going to make that statement, is he? Only a friend of God, only a child of God can make that statement. I love the Lord. What a precious thing it is to love God. Tomorrow or to, starting tonight, right now, we ought to thank God that I can honestly say that I love him. Amen. That I love him. You know why that's so precious? Because scripture tells me in 1 John 4, 10, I love him tonight because he first loved me. Amen. I can say I love you, Lord, because the Lord hath said in eternity, I love you, child. Yeah. What a blessed thing that a sovereign God of heaven and earth would set his gaze upon me and say, I love you. Amen. 
Because of that tonight, Christian, I can say I love the Lord. Amen. I love the Lord. I've been loved with an everlasting love. Which tells me I love the Lord from now on. Thank you, Lord, for that. Somebody asked me not long ago, how do you know if you're saved? You, know, you get these questions all the time. How do you know if you're saved? Somebody was doubting their salvation. And I just had a conversation with them not many days prior to that when they were telling me how much they love the Lord, how much they love Jesus. Several days later, preacher, how do I know I'm saved? I said, do you mean, did you mean what you told me three weeks ago when you said, I just love Jesus? Yes, I love Jesus. A lost person can't say that and mean it. Can't say that. That love is given, that love for Christ is given to you from the Father. Only God's children can rightfully say by the Spirit of God, I love the Lord. Amen. Boy, isn't that something to be thankful for, for tonight? And we've been loved with an everlasting love. Man, I, I can't explain that, church. But I'm thankful for it. Yes. Maybe in the morning, the first thing, before you think about turning on the oven and heating up the turkey, before you, you think about uh, giving the house a once-over before company gets there, before your feet ever hit the, the floor in the morning, maybe I'll just stop and think about, I've been loved with an everlasting love. And be thankful for that. Be thankful for them because you know who you are. See, what makes that special to me to know that God loves me with an everlasting love is because I know who I am. Yeah. I know who I am when y'all ain't around. Come on, come on. I know who I am. I know the thoughts that I have. But I've been loved with an everlasting Praise love. God. <laughs> that means no ending. Mm. But no beginning. Mm. God's just loved me. Explain that preacher. I can't, but I'm thankful for it. Amen. Thank you, Jesus, for that. If you can say tonight that I love the Lord, isn't that isn't it great to be able to say that? We ought to thank God for that. So we see the worshippers refrain there, and then let's look here at the worshiper as he shares his reasons for saying I love the Lord. You see the second part of verse number two, all the way through verse number eight. We see there that he loves the Lord and he says, God has listened mm -hmm. to me. Mm -hmm. I'm thankful to God and I praise him and I give him this doxology and I love him because he first loved me, but also because he has listened to me. Amen. Mm -hmm. Listen, church. What if he did? Wow. We just brought our petitions before the Lord a few moments ago. How many times have you been burdened and, and, and just had to, you couldn't wait to hit your knees and take your cares to the Father? How many times have you done that? You just, you're just in your soul, I've just got to pray. You know the old song, I must tell Jesus? You ever been there? I must. Tell Jesus. There's something going on in your life that the preacher can't help you with. The elders of the church can't help you with. Your spouse, your children, your best friend. Nobody can help you with. And you say, I must tell Jesus. Yes. It's great. We ought to be thankful as the psalmist is here because we know that he hears Amen. our prayers. Yes. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> How sad is it tonight for those folks who are carrying their burdens and their prayers to a dead God? That's right. Mm. Mm. A God that can't do anything about it. Mm -hmm. We ought to be thankful tonight because he hears, he's listened to our prayers. Knowing that he hears our prayers is a blessing. Jeremiah 33, 3, call unto me and I will answer thee. You call 
and I'll answer. Amen. Seth God. You may call me later on tonight and I may or may not answer the phone. You may call pastor later on tonight. He may or may not answer. You rest assured, you get on your knees and call upon God, he'll answer Amen. you. Amen. Yes. We may be sleeping and slumbering, but the Lord never does. <laughs> sleeping and slumbering and sliding. Yeah, and slumbering, man. <laughs> God never does. Amen. God never does. You are his child. His ear is inclined towards you. You want something to praise him for? Praise him for that. Amen. Praise him for that. Not only that, but praise him because God has lifted the believer. In verses three through seven, the psalmist talks about being lifted. Now all of us go, I just talked about it a while ago, all of us go through times of depression and distress and, and gloom and fog and funk and all of that stuff. Who is it that brings you out of that? Yes. If I'm not mistaken, it was the same psalm, psalmist who said, I lift my eyes unto the hills. Whence cometh my help? My help cometh from on high. That's who lifts you out of those things. Job says in Job 14, 1, man that lives with a woman is, I mean, I'm sorry, man that is born, <laughs> man that is born of woman is in a few days and full of trouble. <laughs> I'm going to play around a little bit. My wife ain't here tonight. <laughs> I forgot we on Facebook. They're probably sitting there watching. I'm in trouble when I go home. <laughs> Man that is born of woman is of a few days and full of trouble. We're going to have trouble, church. That's a given. We're going to have trials. But we have a God who cares. Yes. But with God, listen. You think He's not going to lift you out of this prop, this trial? Just look back. Look behind you. Has He not done it before? No. He'll do it again. Amen. He'll do it again. God specializes in lifting the fallen and giving strength to the weak. I, I like the old song that says, "God specializes in things thought impossible, mm -hmm. and He can do what." None other can do. Whatever that thing is in your life tonight that you think is just out of the realm of the possible, listen, with God all things are possible. Amen. You have reason to be thankful tonight. Let's move on. Verse 8. The psalmist says we can give thanks to the Lord because he has liberated the believer. Notice what God has done for the believer. He liberated us from our sins. You say, well, I ain't got nothing to praise God for, oh yeah? Huh. <laughs> Have you forgotten that once there was a death sentence hung over your head? Yeah, listen. Have we forgotten that once we owed a price that we could not pay? Have, had we forgotten that once we were dead spiritually yeah. and had not the ability nor the power to do anything about it? A death sentence hung over our head, but Christ hung on his cross for Amen. us. Boy, church, that's enough to listen, we just stopped right there. Thank God. Amen. Listen, that was your biggest need. If you're saved tonight, God has already taken care of your biggest need. Doesn't it stand to reason he'll take care of everything else? We got a lot to thank him yes. for, church. A lot to thank him for. Not only has he liberated us from our sentence, but he's liberated us from sorrow. I was thinking about shame earlier. He has replaced our sorrow, our joy, our sorrow with joy, our shame with joy. The psalmist said, even in the valley. Even in the valley. I'm reminded, I'm reminded of the scripture that tells us that we can have that peace that passeth all understanding. You ever been so sorrowful, so heartbroken, 
Yet God come about you, the Spirit of God come about you, and there was a peace Amen. that you knew everything was going to be all right. That peace that passeth all understanding, even in the valley of the shadow of death, the same psalmist said, I fear not, for thou art with me. He's not only liberated the believer, liberated us from our sentence, from our sorrow, but I love this one verse. He says he's liberated us from our stumbling. He put our feet on a solid foundation. Look in verse number eight. For thou hast delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, and my feet from falling. Church, I don't know about y'all, but I'm glad that this thing ain't up to me to stay right. Come on. Amen. If it left up to me to hold on to my salvation, I would be in trouble. But I'm thankful tonight that God hath held my feet. Amen. Yes. And kept me from falling. <clears throat> Come on. <laughs> That's enough to shout about tonight. How can you fall from grace if God is holding your feet? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I we're talking about hands that scooped out the seas and weighed the mountains. Those are the hands that hold your feet. Come oh. on. <laughs> Like I told one pastor one time who believed you could lose your salvation and I agreed with him. I said, I believe you can. And his eyes got big. He said, I thought you believed you couldn't lose your salvation. I said, no, you can lose yours, but the Bible says salvation is of the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm glad I couldn't save myself. If I could save myself, I could unsave myself. <laughs> He holdeth my feet from falling. Amen. We've been liberated, set loose like Lazarus. John eleven forty four. He that was dead come forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound with a napkin. And Jesus said, Loose him. Let him go. Amen. Got a lot to be thankful for, church. How about verses 9 through 19? Verse 12 poses a good question. What shall I render unto the Lord for all his benefits toward? God, you've been so good to me. You have saved me. You have loved me and caused me to love you. God, you have brought me out of the depths of despair. God, you have done so much for me. Now, what can I do for you? Isn't that what the psalmist is saying there? What shall I render unto the Lord for all his benefits towards me? What a good question. How could we ever begin to repay the Lord for what he's done for us? I got nothing to give but me. Right. Right. Well, I've got nothing to give but me. That ain't much, but God said that's all I want. I got thinking about Job as he lost everything. And, you know, Job was a man that every day pastor worshiped God and and offer uh, sacrifices on the off, on the on the altar, and and every day worship God. And and Job, Job looks around one day, and he's lost everything. And the next frame, you see Job. He's sitting. The Bible says on the ash heap. I got to thinking about that one day. Where did the ash heap come from? Probably the altar. Or every day he sacrificed. God, I used to give you the best of the calves and the best of this. I, I don't have that anymore. But I, I've got me. God wants you. Your heart. Your service. Verse number nine. Listen to the psalmist. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I will walk before the Lord in the land. The psalmist here promises, Lord, I'm going to live for you. You know, I find it helpful every day to remind, my, to remind myself and to, to, to pray and let the Lord know today I'm going to serve you. I'm going to live for you, Lord. Listen, he died for us. Oughtn't we want to 
Should we want to live for him? Yes. No greater expression of worship than holy living. Amen. You want to worship God? Some, or, or Paul says that we should worship God in everything that we do. Everything you do should be an act of worship. That means holy living. Yes. Living set apart. Living for God. No matter what everybody else around you is doing. I'm going to live for him because of what he's done for me. He says, I will, I will live for the Lord. I will practice in verse number nine, ten, or verse number nine. And then there's the I will of persuasion in the first part of verse 10, 13. He says, he is persuaded to believe. I will take the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. He promises to believe right. Not only does he say, I'm going to live right, but I'm going to believe right. How do you do that? How many of you here want to believe right? Amen. Ooh. You want to believe right, don't you? How do you do that? Scripture says, study to show yourselves approved unto God. Do you know one act of thanksgiving is picking this Bible up? Yes. And studying it. Amen. That's right. Not just reading it for a daily vitamin or a daily fix. <laughs> Study. God, I love you enough to want to know what you have said mm -hmm. to me. It's good. He promises to believe right. He promises, and there's a, in verse 13, there's an I will of prayer. He promises to pray right. Look at that in verse 13. I will take the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. The psalmist says, I'm going to live right, I'm going to believe right, and I'm going to pray right. How do you pray right? Do you read, pick up a lot of different books that will tell you how to pray? Some people believe you can't rightfully pray unless you're in the right posture. You got to be on your knees or, you know, whatever the case may be. But I think to properly pray right is to be concerned more with God's will being done than your own. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that what Jesus taught us to pray? Lord, not my will, but yours. Mm -hmm. Even in the garden. There being another way. Yeah. Nevertheless, your will be done. That's being thankful to God. Praying that his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I'm going to live right. I'm going to believe right. I'm going to pray right because I'm thankful to the Lord. And then the I will of performance in verse 16, he promises to serve God. In verse 16, O Lord, truly I am thy servant. I am thy servant and the son of thy handmaid. Thou hast loosed my bonds. The psalmist here says, this is going to be more than good intentions. I'm not just going to talk the talk, but I'm going to walk the walk. I'm going to serve God faithfully. Yeah. Often I have to remind myself again each day when I get up, God, today I'm going to be your servant. I'm going to serve you. I find it helpful to remind myself of these things. I'm going to serve you today, Lord. I don't belong to me. I belong to you. Mm -hmm. By faith mm -hmm. today, I'm going to walk with you. You see, when I my feet hit that floor in the morning, I don't know what that day is going to bring. That's right. Before I walk out of the door in the morning, I can be sucker punched by the enemy. Mm -hmm. I can be hit with that fog that I talked about a while ago. But today I'm going to walk by faith and not by sight and serve you and you only, Lord. And then lastly, there's verse 17. There's the I will of praise. He promises to praise God. I will offer to thee sacrifice of thanksgiving and will call upon the name of the Lord. The psalmist says, I'm going to praise God. We need to get active in this area, church. Yes. 
Praising God. To, to praise is, is a verb. Mm-hmm. It's an action. That's right. You got to be busy doing it. Yeah. But preacher, listen, look at around us. Look at the news. Look at the hour we live in. This is more than ever we ought to be praising Amen. God. Yes. We ought to be busy praising God and thanking God that for such a time as this, he has placed us here. Hebrews 13, 15, by him let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. Mm -hmm. Have we not said time and time again that God inhabits the praises of his people? How many of you want that God to inhabit where you are? Begin to praise him. Yes. Praise him. Come here Sunday morning not looking around at who's here or who ain't here, what somebody said last week or what they done to you five years ago or or whatever. Come in here and just say, I'm going to praise God today. And watch as the Spirit of God inhabits this place. And praise him. Someone said this, a drop of praise is an unsuitable acknowledgement to an ocean of mercy. Ooh. Huh. Wow. I praise him every once in a while. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What if God just showed mercy every once in a while? Wow. What if God's praise equal or God's mercy was equivalent to your praise? Mm-hmm. Praise him always. Praise him from the heart. Praise him for who he is. Rejoice. Praise him. Nothing else. Because your name is written down in glory. Church, we got a lot to be thankful for. The fact that you're here tonight and was able to come here tonight. Why are we thankful for that? Certainly we live in perilous times. Certainly we live in a dark hour. I understand that. But God's still God. Amen. Yes. God's still been good. Yes. God, we're still his people. The sheep of his pasture. The children of his household. Yes. Much praise is to be done. Amen. And so tonight, before we close, I just ask, is there anyone here tonight that maybe would like to say how much you praise God or what you praise God for tonight? What would you be thankful for tonight? I'm going to tell you tonight, I am certainly thankful for my salvation. I am certainly thankful for my family. I am thankful for my church. And I am ashamed that I don't thank and praise God more than what I do. Amen. Because I stand before you rich Amen. in the blessings of God. Praise God, yes. That's what I thank Him for tonight. Amen. Amen. Anybody else like to say a word of thanks to God? I would, I would have to say exactly what you have said, but I would also like to add, I thank God for a whole lot that I don't have, but I thank you mostly for what I am not, mm-hmm. but for what I'm going to be, mm-hmm. and I'm, I'm not going to look at me anymore like I think I am, but like who he says I am. Mm-hmm. And I just praise him for everything that he's done in our lives, and I love this church. Amen. Of all people, and I thank God that I'm planted here. Amen. 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 Anybody else? I thank Him for. I go to the name of God, Jehovah Shammah. Uh, he's always there. Yeah. He's always there. Anytime I need Him, He is always there. Now it might take me a while struggle within myself to open up to him, to his spirit. But he's always there. Yeah. Yeah. 
And uh, the other thing that, uh, uh, another thing that uh, I, I praise him for is despite all the selfish mistakes I've made in my life, the second part of my life has been great. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Great. That's good, Amen. Amen. All right. Amen. I have a great wife who takes care of me. Uh, and she's the only one that still with me. <laughs> the other one. Yeah. And uh, I have eight granddaughters. Yeah, that is great. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I just praise him for who he is. Yeah. Yeah. So what you say in the glory of your latter house has been greater than all the <laughs> yeah. Anybody else? Amen. We all the second chances. I think right now, for me, 2020 hasn't been a bad year. It started out, but I'm thanking God that He didn't keep me in the darkness, that He stayed with me, He didn't let go of me. He brought me out of it, and in that process, there's a lot of um, unification with family, a lot of openness talking about Him. Uh, for me, a solid ground where I'm more bolder talking about who God is, and I'm just thankful for Him for loving me. And for his um, injection of me. Oh, yeah. It's so, so beautiful. And I just wanted to share that with my family and God's given me that opportunity. So I'm looking forward to the next year. And I'm not regretting 2020. Amen. I am thankful that God is a grace giving God. Amen. I am thankful that we can sit here in a church. No other to say that. I am thankful that every day I wake up is clean slate. I'm thankful to have my friends and family in my life. I'm thankful for my past, which has made me who I am today. I'm thankful for everything, everything that he's done for me. And that will do for me. Yeah. Amen. Man, he wants to do it, Jay. Good, good work. Amen. What else? First, I can't believe I'm going to do this. <laughs> my entire life, I have been the black sheep of my family. I was saved at a young age, but there was an awful lot of backsliding because I hung out with the wrong crowd. And one of the things that I always wanted to be was more like my mom. My mom was one of the greatest Christian women I have ever had the pleasure of having in my life. And one of the greatest things that I've ever been told in my entire life was this past year. My brother told me, I see so much of mama in you now. You have grown so much since you moved to South Carolina. You can see so much change in you since you started going to church where you're at. I see mama in you. Mm -hmm. I am so thankful that I had such a Christian woman in my life to give me what I needed so young so that I could like Mr. John said in the last part of my life here, mm -hmm. I can actually say the last 10 years have been so much better than the first 40. Amen. And I can pass that down to my grandchildren Amen. because we have 23 <laughs> and one great grandchild. Amen. And for that, I am a very wealthy woman. Amen. But only by the grace of God. Sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. Anybody else before we dismiss? Right. Father, God, I sense your presence in here tonight. Thankful for that. 
I'm thankful, Lord, tonight that there's been obedience in here to the prompting of the Spirit of God. Praise your name. Yes. Because, Lord, it's only the Spirit of God that would prompt us to do that. Lord, I'm thankful tonight to have a place where the Spirit of God can move unhindered. Amen. What a sweetness and a freshness that I feel at this moment. Mm -hmm. It's not been loud. It's I've been a lot of energy. There's been the sweet presence of the Spirit of God. I pray God as we leave this place tonight. God, that we will walk away mindful of this presence. Mm -hmm. That we'll walk away tonight walking in your presence. Yes, Lord. Because see, Lord, you're not going to go your way and we're going to go our way. Mm -hmm. We carry the presence of the Spirit Amen. of God with us everywhere that we go. Yes. May we be presence focused people no matter what we do the rest of our days that we are continually aware of your presence may we be continually people of praise and thanksgiving thank you for your presence tomorrow with all the gatherings of families thank you for your presence the day after that and the day after that. Thank you for your presence that will be felt in here in this house Sunday. Yes. As we come back, having praised you and worshiped you individually, and as we come back in here Sunday to worship and praise you corporately. And we bask in the presence of yes. our God. Yes. May you dwell and inhabit fully this house. Yes. Unhindered. Yes, Lord. Have your will. Have your way. And we'll thank you. Yes. And praise you. And worship you. Both now and forever. In his holy, blood-stained name, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And all God's people said. Amen. 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 Happy Thanksgiving. Be safe. Good word, brother. Thank y'all for being here tonight. Have a great and happy Thanksgiving. Amen. Thank y'all for being here.